Okay, you guys, let's go over this introduction. Uh, we'll talk about a few things, and uh, George can, you know, either choose to revise something or maybe not. So it's really up to him whether he wants to, to uh, revise what he's already done. Um, an introduction really gives you an idea of what's going to happen in the chart. One thing I noticed up here is that he took a little bit from the melody, which is good. A uh, little saxophone figure there. And introductions can be really as long as you want them to be. I've, I've written introductions that lasted a minute long. Um, it just depends on the chart. It depends on how you, uh, how you approach it and if it makes sense or not. So this is a four-bar introduction, and it looks like he's got kind of a layered effect but by sections. He's got forte piano trombones, uh, Harmon's coming in with some color on some um, harmonic, just basically harmonic figures there. Uh, and the saxes are pretty much carrying the melody of that that little figure that we see in the first part of the melody here. Actually, it's doubled up to be 16th notes, which is fine. A um, couple things I noticed. Uh, one is the harmony. He's got G major 7 going to D7 sharp 9, back to G major 7, back to D7 sharp 9. So I think that could be improved upon a little bit, and I'll show you in a minute what I came up with that... Um, I think would work okay as well. So the, the things that I see here are, one of them is breathing. Um, the problem with having so many st straight whole notes in the trombones is they can't hold them. So some guys are going to be, um, they're going to be breathing at different times. You're going to be dropping out the chord, especially the bass trombone. He's not going to be able to play all the way uh, to uh, the fourth bar without breathing. So you may want to consider having an eighth rest here uh, so they can breathe or maybe an eighth rest here uh, you're pushing it maybe even depends on how loud uh, this gets but another thing I noticed he doesn't tell the players how loud to get this may be forte double forte mezzo forte coming from piano so you'll want to make sure that you put dynamics in that reflect what, exactly what you want maybe make these a little shorter and then put a uh, dynamic marking there so be aware that these guys have to breathe. So you're going to have to make the music play uh, so where they, they have a natural, easy way to know where to breathe. Not so much in the trumpets. Obviously, you got to rest in a, a beat and a half there to do that. Um, I noticed in the, the voicing here, he's got he's basically got the root, third, uh, fifth, and the seventh here. That's okay. Uh, I, may, I might choose to put the ninth there, which is an A. So you have a, um, not the root, but I think he might want that little crunch there, the half step crunch, which is okay. I guess I would probably opt for for the ninth to get a little more uh, color in there. Uh, this figure, da 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 da. Um, you'll notice that this is a D plus seven sharp nine chord, and right here he's got the note E. He might want to consider making that an F because it does line up with the chord a little better. It does clash, as you can see. We've got a we've got an F against an E in that melody. Now it goes by really fast, and you can argue oh, it's just a passing tone, um, and that's that's probably true. But we also have a tritone. Um, it doesn't sound too bad, but it is a tritone. I tend to not write tritones. Maybe it's because I had a few years of counterpoint, but I don't write tritones in in melodies or figures uh, generally per se, unless it's like a you know Charlie Parker tune or something where where he did that, but but I tend to stay away from um, tritones. They're hard to hear, especially in the um, brass section. It's just kind of an awkward interval. I just was always taught to avoid that, so I do. But um, okay, now you'll you'll notice that there is no rhythmic emphasis or impetus really in the brass. Um, I hear this as maybe having a counter counterpoint thing: R rhythm and rhythm and harmony in the brass, and then melody in the saxes. Now, obviously, he's got harmony there, but but this forte piano here, um, it doesn't really give any any rhythm um, to the to the to the brass section. They just kind of sit there, and I see sometimes a lot in arrangements where guys will write just footballs, you know, um, and I think making a little rhythm here would, would help. Maybe. Um, but I'll show you. I'll show you what I came up with in just a second. So, like I said, George can make any kind of changes he wants, or he doesn't have to. So, um, let's take a little look, quicker look here. 
Okay, the, as far as the voicings go in the trombones, he's got them spread out, which is fine. He's got the, the uh, because the berry is playing the melody there, he's got the root. So this is a, that's a fine voicing. That's fine as well. We did talk about the breathing. That's going to be a problem. Um, I have a little issue with this, um, with this house top on a, on a um, eighth note. I think he should make that a quarter note with a house top if he wants it fat or make a quarter note. I think you wanted to make it short and notation wise, I think it's better to have a quarter note dotted or a quarter note house top. So, um, obviously right after the intro, um, we've got a lot of staggered rhythm here. Trumpets come in on the end of one. Possibly you might want to just add the trombones there. When you stagger out rhythm in between sections, you, it loses a little bit in translation and you don't have as much rhythmic power, I guess you could say, because it's just kind of staggered and, and it sometimes sounds a little choppy. So, um, he may want to consider putting the trombones on the end of one as well. Um, if I were George, I would get rid of this right here in the saxes and just have this have this go right to the end. Um, ba -da -da -ba -dum, bop, bop. It sounds a little strange. It sounds a little, just a little unnecessary. I think he could just have a dotted half there, and then have the have the rhythm. Uh, D7 sharp 9 chord come in with the brass there. So he's really just opening up um, a spot for the saxes to come through here. Um, this particular, I'll get to the voicings, I'll get to voicings later in other videos, so I, wanna, I don't want to waste time here, but if you take a look down at the rhythm section, uh, I, I think he should write some stuff for piano here, even if it's going along with the trombones, because uh, the piano player really has no idea what's going on in the band. Uh, in introductions and things where things are specifically written out, I think he should write a piano part there. And possibly for guitar, give him rhythmic figures. And that's why if, if he does some ryth rhythmic figures in the brass, um, take more rhythmic figures together, the, the support can come from the rhythm section as well. Okay. Um, Bass just basically walks. Um, let's not get into that right away. I want to get to um, what I meant by having some rhythmic figures. Let's go over here. Okay, I just did this some finale real quick. Um, we're, two things here, harmony and rhythm. This introduction is the same introduction. It's four bar, but what I did was I had, um, what I thought of was to have the brass play this rhythmic figure along with harmony. Bop, Ba, da, da, ba, and then the saxes answer that with the figure da 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 ba, da. So you have ba, ba, da, 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 ba, do, ba, ba. Here's a D13 sus chord. So we have a. We don't start on G major nine. We actually start. Um, if I voice the D in the trumpet, you would have the sharp eleven there, and this would be like kind of like a resolution to the G minor set. So just adds a little bit of variety. This is just kind of what I came up with and, and heard. Um, so you see the, the contrapuntal nature of this type of thing, and then we come together right there, and that's where the saxes would come in right there. And then they bop, 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 and you could, you could change that to whatever. You could make it an eighth note. Um, or eight, Eighth rest and come in on the end of one, or I just put da 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 ba do ba do do do. So we talked about I talked earlier about no cross section voicings in this, and what I think I'm going to do in my arrangement is do a similar thing like this. Take George's little introduction there, ba ba do ba do ba do 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 do, but I'm going to do cross section kind of a contrapuntal cross section thing without rhythm section. So we have a lot of a lot of power here, and then we, we uh, end it right there on that nice little D plus 7 sharp 9 chord, and then we come in with some cross-section writing there. So so if you have any questions, leave them. Those are just my first thoughts on the introduction, and like I said, George can make any changes he wants. He, he, can, uh, he doesn't have to change anything if he doesn't want. So um, he may think of things based on what I say, or he may totally discard them, so it's up to him.
So uh, let's keep going, and, and we'll, I'll have another video for you soon.